Okay, my name's uh, Deirdre, also <coughs> Deirdre Lambert. I uh, have a company called Optimise Your Options in Canberra and I'm uh, a life coach and a business coach. I'm actually what I consider to be a mindset coach because I'm a master practitioner of uh, neuro-linguistic programming and hypnotherapy. I was a teacher for a number of years before that. Jess and I are, are going to talk to you about... Is anything going to happen? Um. You want it, you yeah, want just keep on going until we start out. We'll just oh, oh, we're up. We just sorry. need to get rid of this. Yeah. Get rid of this one. Sure. And then we can go. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, if we just put that on. Oops. On sorry. slideshow. <laughs> yeah. Slideshow. Yeah. Uh, From beginning. Yeah. Yo! Round of applause. Thank you very much. Now we we'll just have it so you're not all going to go looking like that. Okay. Jess and I both work with people. I work with their mental bodies and Jess works with their physical bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let her tell you a little bit about it. Hi, my name's Jess. Can you hear me up the back? Okay, good. Um, I'm the owner and sole director of Energy Fitness Centre. I'm going to read off this because I'm not very good at this, so just humour me. I'm going to tell you how my life changed very quickly and you can find yourself in circumstances that you hadn't imagined. You have no choice but to adapt to changes, no matter how fast or how difficult, and still survive. As a leader, this is just a fact of life. People rely on you, and you must be flexible, resilient, and determined when times are tough. And when things don't work, you just have to keep trying until something works. Here's a little bit about me. I've been self-employed for 17 years, but things change dramatically. Nearly four years ago, my husband at the time and I opened our 11th business together. Four weeks later, the GFC hit, my marriage ended, and I was on my own. All of a sudden, I no longer had a husband, or more importantly, I no longer had a business partner. But I was still a mother with three children to care for. So for the first couple of months, I thought I was doing pretty good. I was paying the bills, was fixing the problems as they came up, I was just treading water. After a, a while, I realized I wasn't having any of those amazing days that you should have when you're in business. Those days where you feel invincible, like you've ticked all the boxes, a job well done, you go home really, really satisfied and really happy. I also started having a problem with staff retention, which I couldn't understand because fitness is an industry that people want to work in. And I'm a great boss. I think I'm a nice <laughs> boss anyway. Which raised the question with me, why were they not staying with me? And then I realized, how could I possibly lead my team when I had absolutely no idea where I was going? Who would follow a leader who seemed to have no direction? I'm not going to leave you completely at a loss. There is more. Okay, that's me, you know about me. Okay, five principles for success. This is slightly iffy, isn't it? No. So anyway, we can... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, ah, ha, ha. We need to go. Guys, is it awful for you or can you cope? Can cope. It's awful. Thumbs up. Excellent. <laughs> Love to see that. Okay. High principles for success. This is mostly based on NLP with a few added extra bits chucked in by myself. Know your outcome. Take massive action, not little tiny bits of action. Take massive action, sensory acuity, behavioural flexibility, and operate from a state and physiology of excellence. Okay, I might gallop a little bit fast today simply because we've lost a bit of time. Uh, you might want to have some um, some ideas to discuss, talk to us about. Okay, I'm also going to talk about a model for personal growth, and it's called the Be Do Have model. Okay. And this is going to be available for you. So who do you need to be? What do you need to do in order to have your dreams come true? Now, some people think you can sit and visualize and it will all happen. Absolute bulldogs. You need to get out and do some work. So we always start with the end in mind. Know your outcome. And the outcome will be leadership, which will come eventually. Might not as fast as one would like. However, you guys are well on your way, definitely. John F. Kennedy, President of the United States of America. Efforts and courage are not enough without purpose and direction. Absolutely necessary. Okay, 
So how do we start? You must begin with having an idea in mind. Call it a dream. Call it something that you actually have. You've got an idea in mind. You might brainstorm this, toss some ideas about in the air, and then you start with a clear direction that you're going to work towards because it activates this, your reticular activation system, which is a part of your brain. It actually is a physical part of your brain, and there it is, hanging about the reticular activation system. It's interesting. I suppose... I just call it the RAS. I've called it the RAS for a while, so I'm not going to use the whole phrase. Your RAS has a lot of basic functions in your body. It um, organises your sleep patterns, your walking, your talking, works in conjunction with the autonomic nervous system. And in fact, if your RAS calks out, that's when you go into coma. However, it has another side to it. And if your RAS is stimulated, if it's stimulated, that's when your inner thinking world meets your external physical world. Setting a goal by having some actual thing in focus in your mind, that's when you rise. Heard of this fellow, Tony Robbins? It's in your moments of decision that your destiny is shaped. Now this morning, if you were at, uh, listening to the Vice Chancellor, he was talking about how important decision making is for a leader. It's a huge part of your job. And Jess has already talked to you about that. We'll see some more, perhaps. Okay. Suppose, let's talk about how your RAS can work. Okay. Suppose you wanted to buy a car, right? Now, I have a beautiful young massage therapist, a young Chinese fellow who's actually studying at the moment, and he has a dream of getting a Mazda 3. Anyone else say, oh, yeah, that's a car, oh, that's a car. And he wants a red Mazda 3. So we actually had a conversation last week at our therapy session and all of a sudden I went out the door and I could see red Mazda 3s because it started my Raz thinking about Mazda 3s as well. He's seen them everywhere, everywhere. Maybe he didn't see them so often before he started thinking about wanting one. Okay. You make a decision, you stimulate the Raz. It opens your mind to opportunities and ideas. From these come possibilities and inspiration, and all these combined will create motivation to take action and bring outcomes, because this is where you want to go. Actually, I don't need that. I've got one of these lovely things here. That's where you want to go, because you want to take action to bring your outcome towards you. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Do you think if you just walk out the door with your lovely, fit, fat, gorgeous degree that it's all going to happen for you? It might. I don't know. I honestly don't know. It didn't happen for me. I had to work to get where I wanted. This is the half part. When I talked about be, do, have, you in fact start, remember, with the end in mind. So you start from the have and you work back. Take massive action. You can research this lead if you want to find out more about Cat and Pulsifier. The dreams I only thought about, the ones I took no action on, well, they're still dreams. But the ones that I took action on, they are now reality. Okay. You've heard of the phrase, I'm sure, what you focus on is what you get. Yep. That can be good or that can be bad. Because I'm going to add to the detriment of all else. Because if you focus very strongly on something, that's where you're going, you can be deliberately, consciously focusing. You've set your RAS in motion and you want to get there and you have this dream. But you can also have sec secondary negative things going on that you're also focused on. Things that you think, in fact, are part of your life and part of who you are that are pretty negative. Pardon, that are pretty negative. You'll be focusing on them as well. To the detriment all else, um, suppose you went into a warehouse and you were looking for something and there was no lights but you had a torch. So how big is the beam of light from a torch? It gives you that much but there's the rest of the warehouse, you don't know. So your focus will work for you if you know where you're going and you want to get there and you've set your goals. But be aware of other thoughts going on and we'll come back to this that you also, your unconscious, might also have a focus on that will detract from you seeing the rest. So keep your focus po positive, keep your focus in the direction you want to go, and don't get distracted by other focuses that, to the detriment of all else, you just won't see it. Okay. 
She's a lot of psychiatric help for him, isn't she? You've heard about uh, anyone here done, oh, you all did high school physics, didn't you? So you all know about the law of cause and effect. For every action, there is a reaction. It's called causality, so something causes something else to happen. Yep, that's your life as well. We are all working at the co law and effect, the cause of law and effect, universal laws. For every effect in a person's life, there has been a cause. Okay. Now I'm going to take this to another idea. That means when you think about something, you have an effect on something. Have you heard about this as well? That your thoughts actually have power and energy and you've already started it if you're working on your RAS. Anyone here in interested in what I'm interested in, which is quantum physics, which is absolutely fascinating, isn't it? No one knows if it's right or wrong. Everyone has wonderful theories, but what I like about it is this exploration of probability by suggesting that you observe something and it's going to happen. That's a very, very, very simplistic, simplistic interpretation. Um, anyone ever read or seen the movie What the Bleep Do We Know? Fantastic, isn't it? Really, really interesting how it, it brings the idea of science and thought and creativity and all of that together. You can buy the books, you can ha see bits and pieces from the movie on What the Bleep Do We Know? Very easy to get hold of. So again, if you start aiming your thoughts in a specific direction, if you're seeing it in your mind, you start the direction of that coming towards you. So you're actually starting to take action. You might not think you're physically doing anything, but you have a powerful mind. Your mind is more powerful than the biggest, bestest supercomputer in the whole world. It works in seconds. But you program yourself. No one else programs you, or do they? Well, actually, they do, but that's a whole different workshop altogether. Okay. <coughs> do you want to live at cause, or do you want to live at effect? If you let a, live it affect, it means you're possibly being feeling like a victim, you're possibly blaming other people, you're possibly saying it's not my fault, you're possibly saying I can't do this, or do you want to live at cause? The only way to live is living at cause. Living at cause means you have a positive, positive mindset. You don't play the blame game and you take 100% responsibility for actions and results, which is exactly what a leader is. You will not get into leadership unless you start thinking about this way. And don't forget, everybody, leadership begins here. It begins with you. You start by leading yourself. You become the example. You become the model. People start to come to you. People start to follow you. And Jess is going to talk a bit more about that later. So here's another action step you can take. You can start setting serious goals for yourself now. Zig Ziglar, one of the most famous motivational speakers ever. Goals or dreams we convert to plans and take action to fulfill. Okay. Heard of SMART goals? You might have heard of these. SMART goals are a quite straightforward way. They're in fact um, a way to organise your thinking. It's a good way to organise your thinking. They're called SMART because it's S-M-A-R-T. I believe this is going to be available for people to access later, is that right guys? I mean you can take notes if you like, but you will have access to all of these PowerPoints. Smart, specific, significant and stretching. If you have a goal that's not going to stretch you, what's the point of having it? Honestly. Measurable, meaningful, motivational. It's to drive you, it's to get you going, it's to have some meaning for you. I mean, you might have a role um, to get a Porsche, but that might not happen tomorrow. But that might be like maybe 18 months from now. That can happen. Amazing things can happen. Measurable, we'll talk a little bit more about. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Attainable, achievable, acceptable, action-oriented. If you set a goal that's not going to happen, Again, what's the point of having that one? Unless it's like a 20-year goal and you keep focusing on that. But you have to have in your list of goals something that you can attain within the next three, six, nine months. And we're going to talk about how you do that. 
they have to be realistic. They have to be relevant, reasonable, rewarding, results oriented. And they have to be timely, tangible and trackable. Now if you consciously sit down and try to work out your goals, based on those you'll find you'll have some things that you can't seriously work towards that will be actionable and you will be able to actually use to get where you want to go. Now you write your goals in a specific way. They're written in the positive, they're written in the present tense, and they're written in the first person. This is likely to be a goal that some people here might have. It's now 12th of December, 2012. I'm holding my graduation certificate in my hand. Yippee! And you go even further than that with them. You start to think of what you'll see and what you'll hear and what you'll feel and what you'll think when you have it. So I feel absolutely fantastic to have achieved this goal. I can remember that day in Glasgow, walking down there going, and I could see my family and oh, it's fantastic. I can hear the applause as I walk down the steps and back to my seat. I can see mum and dad in the balcony clapping and smiling. I know they're very proud of me. It might not be mum and dad, it might be your partner, it might be your best friend, your granny, I don't know. When you're setting a goal, you put yourself there in the future. You don't set your goal and think about where you are now. The point of your goal is to be there and be in it. And this is part of the mindset stuff. You make your mind see it, visualize it, and be there. It gives you more for your RAS to work on, guys, to find these opportunities and chances for you. Does anyone want to ask anything more about goals? I, I think I'm probably ga galloping a pace about here. I was just very aware of time. Everybody quite quite comfortable with that. Okay, we'll go on. Sensory acuity. Before I actually do that, I think it's important to um and again I'm thinking at the when you do graduate you will do this. You will celebrate, won't you? Won't you? Have dinner. You might, you know, have dinner with the family and that's all very nice. Then head to the party with your friends afterwards and send them home. Yes? Uh -huh. It's important when you set your goals that you celebrate each one. Your mind and your body work together. If your mind's happy, you're physically happy. If you're physically down, your mind is down. There's a lot more I can do about that too. In fact, that's, that's why that's, we actually are going to do something about that, not too distant, very shortly. You celebrate your goals, you reinforce within yourself your sense of achievement, your sense of success, and you keep building on it, and you keep building on it. And when you become a leader and you have a team and you have a group, you also celebrate their successes. You celebrate their goals, their achievements, how they do it. It's a really important thing, because even though you might have um, goals from your organization or goals for your business, you're all people. You're all human beings and you all have minds and you all have bodies. And they don't function, you don't function. Sensory acuity. This is back to being tingly spider mm -hmm. Stephen Covey, has anyone read any books on leadership by Stephen Covey? Fantastic, brilliant. Every human has four endowments. Self-awareness. Conscience, independent will and creative imagination. They give us the ultimate human freedom, the power to choose, to respond, and to change. These are your gifts. They're your God-given gifts. You have them with you now. You've had them since birth. How you use them is up to you. How I use them is up to me. Now, your RAS has been activated, in fact, probably activated even right now. Believe it or not, just by sitting here and just by listening to me, you're already starting to activate your RAS because that's how your mind works. Your unconscious mind is already hunting for stuff. It's already thinking. There's already thoughts charging through. You might not have access to them yet. You might not be fully aware of them yet. But I guarantee it is happening. The minute you start thinking these things, and they will happen for you if you then start to focus on them more. Can't help it. Just the way the mind works. 
Sensory acuity. Anybody any idea what that actually means? Awareness of senses? Yes. It's using your senses. You have sensory neurons in your brain. You have sensory receptors outside. You have, what, what are the five? Eyes, ears, mouth, touch, and smell. You use more of them and less of them depending where you are. Like the couple hours when we go for lunch, it will be the olfactory and it will be the gustatory, which will be coming up. I often get talking, by the way, and forget to use these. That's why I have the screen in front of me to remind. I have made memoirs for you. I know I can just blather on forever. Okay, at lunchtime, you'll probably use the last two more. You do a lot of talking. That's your sensory receptors. Now, from your sensory receptors, information goes into sensory neurons in the brain who then start to compute and give meaning to your life. So they're actually how you make sense. That's why they're called sensory. It's how you make sense, and it's how you put it all together. Now, everyone in this room is having a completely different experience. Every single one of you. Because your sensory receptors and your sensory neurons work individually to suit you. And mine suit me. And when you're a leader, you will be working with teams of people, and you will be maybe delivering a program like this and you must understand they're not all getting it it's not possible they will get bits and they will get bits and they will get bits whereas you know it all because you've prepared it and it's your thing so as a leader you have to start having sensory acuity to understand what's going on amongst your team as well as what's going on amongst your staff and be aware of how you're going to bring that together and use it begins with you. Sensory acuity begins with yourself. You start to become aware of yourself. So you're monitoring all sorts of things about yourself. But right now you're not aware of your feet in your shoes or your underwear or you might not be aware of that going up there or you may or may not be aware the temperature's actually risen. You might not be thinking you're a bit thirsty. But your unconscious mind is doing all of that all the time. You're tuning out to a whole lot of that because thank you very much, you're focused on me. But your unconscious mind is doing millions of things right now. But your conscious mind is only taking in a small percent. In fact, of suppose this whole room was the amount of information that's coming to you right now. Your conscious mind is taking in that much. Seriously. That's all your conscious mind is taking in. But your unconscious mind is taking in it all. And it's feeding it back to your conscious mind in as much as you can handle. But it's all there. And I'm going to talk about technique in a little while, which will help you access a lot of that stuff. Okay. In fact, we might just go to that now. Yep. Expanded awareness. Okay. Expanded awareness is also called um, hakulaku and it, uh, Hawaiians used it, I've used it for centuries. Samurai warriors used to use it. I have no idea what it sounds like in Japanese and probably couldn't pronounce it, but they used it to expand awareness. So it's a very easy technique. What I'd like you to do is just get out of that light. It's just sit up in your seat, just sit in your seat, get your legs comfortable. Don't, don't be holding on to anything at the moment until you practice the use of it. Once you have it, once you and just put your hands in your lap and just lower your shoulders and just be in a present state. What I want you to do is raise your eyes to looking just above your eyebrows to a spot up there. Just up there somewhere, just raise your eyes. Don't bother with your face, just raise your eyes to a spot up there. Take three deep breaths, keep focusing on that spot, breathing in. And out. Still focusing. And out. Breathing in. And out. And lower your gaze to looking straight ahead. Take two fingers up like this. And I want you to keep looking at both fingers 
keep looking at both fingers as far out as you can go until you're just past the point you can't see them and then just slide them back in and drop your fingers and keep that expanded vision that you have. Just keep it going. There you go. You've expanded your awareness in two zones. You've expanded it physically, you've also expanded it mentally. You can now take in more information. You can now focus more deeply. You can now be more aware of everything outside you. Now, as a trainer, I have to use this all the time, pretty darned obviously, because I have to try and keep a check on what's going on in the room all the time. But it means you're also ac accessing your inner resources. Your inner resources in the unconscious mind. You're also accessing them. I believe that might be a little fairy in my handbag, but I'm just going to ignore that. I should have switched off. Okay. If you happen to be in a lecture, and I hope I'm not talking out of turn here, but if you happen to be in a lecture where it's a little bit dull and you've maybe had a heavy night the night before and you start to go like that, take yourself into expanded awareness waking up. Just works, just like that. I teach this to students, I teach this to children, I teach it to adults. If you're in a business meeting, use this to keep yourself alert and awake. Te teach it to everybody and anybody. And honestly, guys, the more you use it, the more familiar and comfortable you get with it, the better it will become. Behavioral flexibility. Okay. Okay. The definition of insanity. Doing what you've always done, but expecting different results. There's behavioural flexibility. <laughs> Cats are probably the most, one of the most flexible creatures that walk on four legs ever. You're all at the beginning of potentially brilliant careers. Wow. So exciting. So exciting. I'm going to ask you some questions. How open are you to change? In fact, how open are you to constant change? Because that's going to be your life. And especially as a leader. How, mm, okay, how open are you to stepping right over the boundary conditions of what your life might be? And keep looking forward. You will have settled into patterns now. It's so easy. The unconscious mind loves patterns, it loves repetition, it loves it, it makes it feel very safe and very comfortable, but it also likes challenges. It's a bit of a dichotomy going on inside your head. The law of infinite variety. It's one of these un intangible things, you know. But the law of infinite variety actually states the person with the most flexibility in attitude, behavior, behavior, thinking and responding will have the most influence in whatever situation they find themselves in. Now you are going out of university with a huge, huge host of resources already there. Your minds are already open to learning. They might feel a bit clogged up, but believe it or not, they are still open, open to learning. You're in a learning environment. You have trained yourselves to learn. You also must develop flexibility and attitude, behaviour, thinking and responding. Because when you can do that and when you can show that skill in yourself, you're going to be picked up and you're going to be noticed. And remember the Vice Chancellor talked about there will be leadership opportunities coming up soon. You're going to be the person they'll tap on the shoulder. We've noticed you. We've seen you. And you really don't care or compare yourself with others. Because your focus is on you when you're, I don't mean that in a selfish way that you just ignore others, but one of, the, one of the ways I've seen people fall down is they start saying, I'm not good enough because I'm not as good as him, or I'm not <coughs> as good as her. That's absolutely no criterion to where you're going in your life as well, because it's your life journey, it's where you're going, and if you've got all these skills, you're on your way. 
never going to do something physical. Remember we talked about living at effect and living at cause. Living at cause, you will be extremely flexible. Okay. State and physiology of excellence. This is coming to the end of what I've actually got to say, but we've got a little bit more to say about that. Okay. There's not a lot of oxygen in this room, I've noticed, and we're actually a bit too warm, so we're going to do something to liven you up a wee bit. What I'd like you to do is just imagine, I've just told you you've got to do the most awful thing in the whole universe, and you really don't want to do it, but I'm telling you, you have. I'm your boss, and you have to do it. Sorry. Put yourself in that mood now. Start to slink down in your seat start to feel it. I've got to tell you, I'm sorry, you might have your master's degree, but you're cleaning toilets for the rest of your life, and that's it. And you're only going to get mm, $2.50 an hour, because that's all I can afford, and that's it. So I want you really to start thinking about having that, and put your body physically into how that feels. You're probably going to feel a bit miserable. I don't see anybody changing. Put your body down yourself in that physical state. Let your shoulders slump. Start to imagine, oh my god, I've been at uni for six years and I'm going to clean toilets and that's it. It's horrible. It's miserable. You're not all going to go in fox tail and make a living from doing it. And you're going to have to do it forever. Okay. Sit up. Sit up. Shake your physiology a bit. Go back and... And do you remember what colour socks are wearing? What colour socks are you wearing? White ones? Anyone got green socks on? No! I hear all students tell you you're so dull. You've got green socks and purple socks and yellow socks. Okay. Put your papers on the floor again. Two feet on the floor. Wait until you lift your head up. Just lift it up. And I want you to imagine there's a golden rod on your back and you've just noticed there's a little fairy in the room. It's a little green fairy. In fact, there's a little green fairy on everybody. It's a his mask. You can see his horns. You can see his green wings. And he's pulling at this cord. And he's pulling you. And you can't help it. Your shoulders are pulling up and pulling back. And you're pulling on you and pulling on you. And he's actually found something else he can pull on. There's little strings at the corner of your mouth. Did you know that? And he's pulling on those. And your lips have to go up. They must go up. In fact, some of you right now are feeling, I have to stand up because you must, because he's pulling you and pulling you so tall and so straight. You can feel this energy. As he's pulling you, you feel this energy flowing right through you as you're tall and you're straight. And you look around you. Look at all these fantastic people all around you sitting tall, sitting straight, sitting energized. Can you be depressed if you're sitting like that? Can you be miserable if you're sitting like that? Can you feel incapable if you're sitting like that? Your physiology goes hand in hand, or mind in hand, let's put it that way. If you think yourself into a miserable state, you'll be in that state. If you think yourself into a physical state, you make yourself physically positive, effective. You walk into a room in that state, people notice you, your leadership is recognized. But if you walk into a room like that, hello. Uh -huh. If you walk into a room like that, for a start, you've probably added two inches to your height and you've made yourself a person to be recognised. Negative physiology equals a negative emotional state equals negative behaviour equals negative outcomes. Remember, you are in control of your thoughts at all time. You choose how you behave, you choose your thoughts. Positive behaviour, positive emotional state positive outcomes.
all goes together, mind and body, hand in hand. It's interesting listening to uh, the Vice Chancellor this morning because whenever I come to something like this, I see connections, connections all the way through. Modeling excellence. There are ways you can do to model excellence. He gave you some really good thoughts and ideas this morning. Neurolinguistic programming is based on modeling excellence. It's based on looking at what someone else does really, really well to achieve excellent outcomes. And what you do is find out what they do and you do it. Now that's why people go and see Tony Robbins. They spend thousands upon thousands of dollars modeling him. They spend five days from nine o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night in his company because they want to model him. But you don't have to actually physically go and do that. What you can do is buy their books, buy their CDs. Anybody here use YouTube? Brilliant, isn't it? All those free resources there. Even if you only get five or ten minutes of somebody, you're still starting to see and notice and be aware of how they're doing it. Modeling excellence. There's a person to model. Seven companies owned by Richard Branson. Seven times millionaire from each of those companies. Owns islands off the coast of the north of Australia. He started off on a barge on the River Thames. That's where he ran his first business from. You don't learn to walk by following rules, you learn by doing and falling over. And you just keep on going. Dame Anita Roddick, Anita Roddick, the body shop, she started off from her garage, cooking up stuff in her kitchen. Her garage became her processing operation before she died, sadly, a few years ago. She was also a mega multimillionaire. If I can't do something for the public good, what the hell am I doing? What are these two people saying about leadership? If you don't learn, you don't learn to walk by following the rules. So, okay, you were a baby once, very small, and you pulled yourself up onto your feet, and you walked around holding the furniture, and then one day you just let the furniture go and off you went. You sat down again. She got up and off you went. You sat down again. The next day you walked more and more and more. Are there rules to walking? Do you ever sit down with your baby and say, now listen, little Jimmy, what I want you to do this is put the foot. Do you? No. How do you learn to walk? You just do it, don't you? Where does the need to walk come from? It's built into you. You just have to. And if you want to be a leader, there are certain things built into you that you will just have to do. Because you will have set your goals, you'll have your momentum, you'll have your drive, and you will just have to do it. But what you're not going to do is each time you come against something that's going to knock you down in your bottom, you're not going to sit there. You're going to pull yourself up again. You might sit there for five minutes. You might lick your wounds a little while, but you're going to get back up. Why are you going to get back up? Because you must. Because you just must. You learn by doing and by falling over. Anita Roddick, her products were one of the first beauty products that in fact became very health conscious. She never tasted anything or rats or mice or anything like that. They were 100% safe. She was one of the first people to actually start doing that. She changed a lot of what happened in the world regarding cosmetics and skin creams and looking at your health and looking at the things you put on your body. Both inspirational leaders. It's a different type of leader. Mahatma Gandhi. Oh, fiddlesticks. Here we are. What was his leadership role? He also caused a revolution. Very serious, mega revolution. What did he do? No one know who Mahatma Gandhi is. The liberation of India. Yes. The British colony. Yes, he did. 
Did he do it by, you know, getting a bunch of soldiers and some guns and going out and fighting the British? I ah, see, you do know. What did he do? Yes, he was a spiritual leader and it was... Non-violence. Non-violence. Absolute 100% non-violence. And he changed a nation. Totally changed a nation. Not just... Well, Anita Roddick did change. Branson has changed. He's changed how people look and do business across the world. Mahatma Gandhi's leadership was actually inspirational to changing a whole nation. Um, a spiritual man... I'm not going to call him a holy man because he never saw him as that. He never saw himself as that. But he said, you can change the world just by being who you are. And you just inspire everyone else. You get them on your wavelength. And the Vice Chancellor talked a little bit about that this morning as well. Okay. Happiness is when what you think, what you say, and what you do are in harmony. Now, I'm actually doing a a series of four workshops at the moment with uh, business leaders in Canberra and we had our first one on Wednesday evening and it was quite fascinating the discussions that we had because they all said you know I don't have time to sit and think about this that's what they all said I'm too busy I'm much too busy I don't have time to stop and think and look at what's happening and each one of them had different things going on in their businesses that came to light and they were articulating them and sharing them with their peers. Happiness is when you think what you say and what you do are all in harmony. So, who do you need to be? And what are you going to do in order to have what you want out of life? The choice is yours. You're on your way now. Richard Bandler, very interesting man, one of the co-creators of modern day NLP. You are born with only two fears, the fear of following, the fear of a loud noise. Now, psychologists and psychiatrists will tell you that they've tested babies, they have. Poor little babies, they've tested them to see what they're afraid of, and that's what they're afraid of. And all the rest is learned, and it's a lot of hard work. Because you've learned and picked up a lot of fears along the way. So you can choose to let these get in the way or not. All of life is a choice. And if you operate from as physiology and psychology of excellence, you can change the world for your better. You can make the world yours. You can affect everyone else round about you. You can live at cause. You can expand your awareness of yourself. You can expand others' awareness of themselves. And if you don't get the success you want straight away, you're going to use your behavioural flexibility and just do something else. You just do something else. There's always something else. You just set your ass to go and find something else. Until you become the person you need to be to have what you want. And I think there's another part of a story coming up right now. Okay. So I never had any doubt that I could do it, but I just didn't know what it was. So this is where the goal setting for me came into play. So I had to change my mindset from one that was reacting to problems to one that was proactive. My mindset had to be changed to have some forward momentum. So where did I want to be in three months, one year, five years? Did I have the skills to get there? What was the picture that I had in my head? And could I engage my staff to see that same picture? So goal setting can contribute to each domain of your life, work, community, home, and self. It can make you a better leader, a better friend, a better parent, a better son or daughter. So what changes did I make? I came up with a set of core values so I could get buy-in from my staff. I created a management team with five separate departments. I empowered my managers by giving them the freedom to run their teams and make their decisions within their job descriptions. I implemented a training structure where the whole team is given monthly training plus off-site training three times a year. My result. A year ago, my gym reached 1,800 members, which is at capacity. So that's, imagine having a business where you can't have any more people come in the door. 
it's really cool. 1,800 people out at West Volcano and pay me money every week to be a member of my club and I can't let anyone else in. What did I learn? Well, I'm always learning. I'm scribbling notes like a mad woman today. But I know for sure that the only way to completely fail is if you fail to learn from it. Someone once said to me that sales is simply the transfer of enthusiasm from one person to another. Leadership's exactly the same. Just add direction and focus. Now, like all entrepreneurs, I ask myself what's next. I'll never not be in business because it's just too much fun. And I accept that I have as many mistakes in my future as I do successes. But with resilience, tenacity, determination, I know I'll always land on my feet. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody got any questions? We have five minutes, or you can have the early mark, whatever. Anyone want to ask about anything that's been talked about this morning at all? Yeah. Well, I like that um, stuff you talked about, um, especially about the NLP, the, the, the yep. modeling success. And yep. this is something, if you, yeah, if you could have a look at it, Richard Branson's quote, because I. I am um, particularly on the two sides. I look at both these people as Excuse mentors. Me, and and Richard Branson, I mean, I'm in education as well. I'm curious what you think from an education point of view. Yeah. Because I kind of feel like I totally agree that you only way really that the lessons you learn the best are when you've fallen over and you've struggled and you got there and you never forget that. But the whole premise also of education and perhaps um, success education, NLP and things like that, is that there's ways that you can um, take steps so that you're enhancing those mistakes. Maybe you're making, mis what I feel is you're making the mistakes at the foothills versus yes. at the higher peaks. And I just, uh, you know, like, I think that, I'm I've noticed this with education, sometimes people just let you go out there you're right. and you flounder for years upon years and the, the danger there is you, you just get demoralized and you just want to quit. Whereas if you have a few steps, perhaps the place where you you kind of learn from your mistakes, you already feel like you've got somewhere. I don't know if there's any Okay, that, that's brilliant. I'm actually doing uh, programs in schools right now with NLP programs for kids, which I intend to uh, to market big time, get out there big time. I'm working for a school right now. When you set yourself steps, steps, achievement steps, that's your goals, and you have action steps. So say you have a big goal that you want to be this in two years' time. Your goals should go beyond three months. Remember I said have celebrations. Your goals need to go out three, maybe five years. And when you're in business, how, how far does your business plan go? Nine, five, yeah, five years. You personally shouldn't be looking at any less than two. And you should have that visualization. Remember what we said, I am here, I am doing this, I'm feeling that, I'm seeing that. And you put yourself there now. So in fact, you're starting here to think about where you want to be and you take yourself there and you put yourself there in your unconscious mind. So you're really focused on it and then you come back, you come back, and you come back, and you come back to now and you can then start to see the steps you have to take and at each step you celebrate, whoa, here. Next step, you celebrate, yes, I'm here. You have that written down, you have it where you can see it You've heard of vision boards. This is the next step to having the ideas in your head, to the goals on the paper, to the image. You want to stimulate this rise in every possible way you can. If you came into my home office, you'd die laughing. I've got posters, I've got images, I've got printouts, I've got cutouts. And I walk into that room and it's like, whoa! Because that's what's getting me up and going and focused on the different directions. If you don't get your mind focused and positive and on your way, yes you are, you're going to slink back and feel, oh, what have I done? And the other thing is you keep a diary. Keep a diary of your success because we forget. We're so busy getting on and doing and charging through. I've got a diary that I write in every single day and it's called my achievements book. And even if it's silly things, even silly things, like I had to make a phone call which I knew was going to be a difficult challenging phone call. I put it off for five days and I thought, bugger it, I'm going to do it this morning and I did it. And I felt good about it and I haven't into my achievements because that built a part of me. Mm -hmm. it you, built don't know, a part of you don't know when your next achievement's going to come. You don't. So you take them yes. small or big. Yes.
and then you can go back so when you get to it's absolutely right you will get to a stage where you nothing's happening you go back and look at your achievements book and you think but look what I have done mm. and I'm now here and because I've done all that I know I can do all of this and you just pick yourself up and keep on going and you just keep on going now what I like about Anita Roddick she had a much bigger mission she became a multimillionaire. My goodness, she became a dame. She was very publicly recognized. But she had a mission about the goodness and how the effect was on everyone else as well. So it was her, not just herself, not just her staff, but also on her potential clients and health and everyone else. So you might we maybe be thinking about what your vision is, what your vision is for yourself. A personal vision is very important. Don't let anyone else tell you. You will go into organisations and they will have a very directed vision and a very directed mission, and that's right. Because uh, you heard the story. Without a focus, you're waffling and in the minute you start. But you must also have within that context your personal, your personal vision and mission, where you're going to go and what you're going to do. Now this is one of the things I'm going to be doing with these people in a couple of months' time. And they're all excited, these bit because they haven't thought about this before. Because they don't have the time. Rubbish! You make the time. You make the time because it's yourself. <sighs> okay, guys, that's now just about your time in here done. Thank you very much for coming. It's been a lovely morning. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Thought you enjoyed yourself? Oh, you've got something.